The choir sing the psalmody appointed for the evening of Easter Day, Psalm 66. Please be seated. The first lesson is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, 
He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up is lost, we are cut off completely. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I am going to and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and says the Lord. Here ends the first lesson.
second lesson is from the Gospel of Luke. On that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The choir sing as the anthem for Easter Day, an extract from the opera Cavaliero Rusticana by Pietro Mascagni.
they say, don't they, that you're not meant to clap in church. But today, of all days, I'm doing what I like. This simple expression of joy, gladness, and thanksgiving is surely allowed. Who made that rule anyway, telling us that we cannot express joy and delight in church? Who said that joy, like perhaps opera music, was only allowed outside of the church and within the church we would remain glum and straight-faced. O oh, clap your hands, all ye peoples, the psalmist writes. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. The peace we have just enjoyed was not written directly as a piece of sacred music to be sung in church, even though it expresses the joy of the resurrection. It was written as a vignette of a sacred anthem within a secular opera. It's meant to represent the sound of a rural village erupting in joy on Easter morning. Rejoice, for the Lord has arisen. Alleluia. It appears in the midst of a plot line which would not be out of place on Corrie or EastEnders, including jealousy, betrayal, murder. But human drama, wherever it is, is always punctuated with a divine song. God's grace transforms even the worst of us and brings us to praise and thanksgiving. God's love reaches into the forgotten and forsaken places of this world and wrings from them hope and possibility. The bleeding of the sacred into the secular and the secular into the sacred is an apt theme on this Easter day. Because if we think that the resurrection does not affect our day-to-day -day lives beyond the walls of the church, we are not really appreciating the reality of what God has done in Jesus Christ. What God can do in Jesus Christ. If we think that we can't bring all that we are into this place and offer ourselves to the God who loves us, then we are also not really appreciating the reality of what God has done in Jesus Christ. If we do not think that God can find a way into opera houses, pubs, museums, hospitals, schools, universities, the suburbs, the city, high-rise flats, food banks, the Houses of Parliament, then we are not appreciating the reality of what God can do. The deepest kind of divine joy is always in the midst of our dramas, our reality. Whether we acknowledge it or not, bidden or not bidden, God is present. God who is not put off by our disobedience, nor confined by our walls or our conventions. God in Christ is not even confined by a tomb with a heavy stone rolled across the door. 
Christ will bring joy out of all that seemed lost. He will bring life from all that seemed to be without hope. He will bring life where all seemed dead and bare. Wherever we go, wherever we are, Christ is there before us. Where there are endings, the risen Christ shows us the way to a new beginning. Even weeping at the grave creates the song, Alleluia. The joy of the resurrection has the power to permeate every aspect of our lives. It can navigate the sadnesses, the disappointments and the sorrows of this world with a love which bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things, believes all things. For the risen Christ is over all and through all and in all. The story we celebrate and the song we sing today emerge from the events of Holy Week, bursting from an empty tomb, emerging from betrayal, loss, darkness and death, and exploding into every corner of our lives, rippling out into the farthest corners of the universe, whispering life into the forgotten corners of our world, reaching down into the depths of hell and waking up the dead from their long sleep, breathing new life into dry bones, reaching into the places of war and conflict and demanding peace, causing us to relinquish anger and embrace compassion, exposing corruption, prejudice and hatred, putting into perspective the petty grievances and little setbacks that we face, whilst holding the hand of those who are weary or grieving or in pain and speaking into their hearts and ours these words. Have faith, you are not alone. The joy of the resurrection is too wonderful to be contained within our church walls and kept to ourselves. It goes with us on all our journeys as we walk along whatever roads we are called to travel, the joy of the resurrection comes with us into our homes and sits at table. For those who watch us now from the four corners of this earth, wherever you are, the joy of the resurrection is with you too coursing through cables and ethernet and Wi-Fi. There is nowhere that the joy of the resurrection will not go. The joy of the resurrection is there as we break bread and cherish the company of friends and family. The joy of the resurrection is there in the midst of all our dramas. The tragedy and the comedy are no boundary for the resurrection. The joy of the resurrection is there in our acts of kindness and in the demands of love. It is there in the green shoots that are springing up all around us. It is there in the tears we shed as we say our goodbyes and in the cry of a newborn baby. Unless we are looking for the resurrection every day, in every place, in every moment of our lives, 
in the so-called sacred and in the so-called secular, in everything that we do and in everything that we are, unless we are looking for the resurrection in all these places, then we have missed the point of all this. And as St Paul says, our faith has been in vain. If it's okay to clap in church, and I can assure you that it is, it's also okay to take the church's joy out with you into the world and know that the risen Christ will not let you go and that the sound of the resurrection will be singing in your ears as you navigate life the universe, and everything else. Nothing will be beyond us. No disappointment will define us. No goodbye will be the end. So my final words to my friends at York Minster and to all who celebrate the resurrection today. Rejoice, for the Lord has arisen, and please don't let it stop here. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I have not been here as long as Vicky, but it is clear to me that in four and a bit years, in some quite unpredictable and challenging circumstances, Vicky has championed the liturgical life of this cathedral church in every possible aspect of that phrase and has helped lead it in times that have been uniquely challenging, I think, for, for all of us across the world. And in doing so, Vicky, you have offered us constantly joy and challenge and constantly widened our horizons. I've been ordained quite a long time, but that's the first time I've had opera in choral evensong. Even at your last service, you lead us onwards. So, Victoria, on behalf of all who work in this holy house, your friends and colleagues throughout the Minster community, we thank you for your service and fellowship as Canon Presenter. We commend Victoria for your care, O oh Lord. May your goodness and mercy follow her throughout her life. Guard her in danger and keep her from evil. Constantly in the right way. Grant that the work you have begun in her may be continued, and that the gift to her may mature and increase. This we ask for the glory of your name, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. God, now Amen. And I invite you to stand as together. God of our beginnings and we celebrate all we have shared with Victoria and ask your blessing as she continues on her journey. May your love in our hearts be a bond that unites us forever. 
wherever we may be. May the power of your presence bless this moment of our leave-taking and guide us all on our pilgrimage for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. resurrection of his son Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you peace and joy in your faith. Under the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you this Eastertide and evermore. Amen.